Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of The Bastard Review. This time around I'm looking at WCW Starcade 91. This event took place December 29th, 1991 in the Norfolk Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. The premise of the show is based around the main event, the Battle Bowl, a 20-man, two-ring battle royal. Forty men are split up into tag teams decided by lottery and face each other in qualifier matches with the winners advancing. This was the first Starcade to be a sole WCW production without the NWA, and also the first without Ric Flair. Our first match of the night sees Marcus Bagwell and Jimmy Garvin take on Tracy Smothers and Michael Hayes. Things start off really slow, with Tracy more concerned about arguing with the fans and his partner than actually wrestling Marcus. Even when it starts to pick up, it's still pretty ho-hum. Really, the highlight of this match is that the Freebirds are on opposite sides, and I have little interest until they face off. Both men keep things friendly up until the end when Marcus smacks Michael for no reason, Michael comes in to return the favor, drawing Jimmy into the ring as well, and Michael accidentally smacks Jimmy in the confusion. While they argue, Tracy goes high risk on Marcus, but Bagwell gets his knees up and gets the pin with a fisherman suplex. Will this lead to the Freebirds splitting up? I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. After that, they show highlights of Steve Austin and Rick Rude progressing over Van Hammer and Big Josh, and of Dusty Rhodes and Ricky Morton progressing over Larry Zabisco and El Gigante. Honestly, I'm okay with this. Up next, Jushin Liger teams up with Bill Kazmaier to take on Diamond Dallas Page and Mike Graham. Early on, Jushin goes for a head scissors against Mike, but Graham doesn't take it too well and it ends up looking sloppy. Thankfully, they make up for it later on with a good segment of back and forth mat wrestling. You know, for a big bulky guy, Bill does an impressive job of skinning the cat, which is when someone goes over the ropes while holding on to them and then pulls themselves back into the ring the way they came. This is obviously all about Liger, and thankfully he gets a chance to really wow the crowd, pulling out moves like a surfboard submission, a spinning heel kick, and going high risk with what I believe is a running 360 degree senton. Unfortunately, the camera barely shows it, which pisses me off. The end sees Jushin pick up the win when Bill presses him over his shoulders and launches him onto a turning DDP for an aided crossbody. A decent match that helps to introduce Jushin to the Virginia crowd, I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. Arn Anderson and Lex Luger take on Terry Taylor and Tom Z-Man Zank next in a decent 10 minute match, but honestly, you know who's advancing before the bell even rings. That being said, Terry and Tom manage to hold their own very well against Lex and Arn. Terry really impresses me here, a vast improvement from his match at Starcade 90. My biggest criticism is that Luger could have done a better job at selling some of Taylor's moves. Lex gives Terry a pile driver and gets the pin, surprise surprise, I'm giving this a 7 out of 10. Then Ricky Steamboat and Todd Champion take on Cactus Jack and Buddy Lee Parker. As Buddy gets up to head towards the ring, he's attacked by Abdullah the Butcher. Abdullah tries to take Buddy's place, but officials manage to stop him and usher him backstage. At one point, Ricky knocks Cactus out of the ring and does a nice diving tope between the ropes into him. Buddy eventually joins the match, but watching him crawl towards the ring is amusing because what happens if he gets there only for Jack to tag him in? He's SOL, and guess what happens? Ricky makes short work of Buddy getting the pin after a crossbody dive. It's kind of disappointing, but it's passable. I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. After that, Brian Pillman and Bobby Eaton take on Sting and Abdullah the Butcher, and I'm greatly amused when Abdullah attacks Sting. Brian tries to come to his aid, but then gets attacked by Bobby, and I just love the chaos before the match even begins. Bobby turns his attention to Sting, throwing him into the ring, and they spend just about all of the time there, though Abdullah and Brian do come in from time to time. Cactus Jack tries to interfere, but it backfires. Sting gets the pin on Bobby with a crossbody dive. Hmm, where have I seen this before? Oh yeah, the previous match. Still, it was fun to watch. I guess Brian's happier Sting progressed than he is sad he didn't. I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. Post-match, Cactus Jack attacks Abdullah and they fight to the backstage. 
I guess they're not tag team partners anymore. Rick Steiner teams up with a Night Stalker substituting for an injured Diamond Stud to take on Big Van Vader and Mr. Hughes. Vader and Rick start things off vying for domination with some impressive strong arm wrestling. Rick barely manages to suplex Vader back into the ring, which is still impressive considering Vader's bulk. From there it becomes somewhat of a train wreck of a match. The Night Stalker tags himself in when Mr. Hughes gets the upper hand over Rick and gives Hughes a diving clothesline that sends him back into his corner, allowing Vader to tag in. Jim Ross tries to convince me that the Night Stalker didn't notice the tag and thus falls prey to a clothesline and horrible looking Vader bomb, but you'd have to be blind to miss that tag. Factor in Rick trying to cover Hughes, neither of whom are the legal men, and it just makes for a stupid ending. I'm giving this a 4 out of 10. Then they show highlights of Scott Steiner and Firebreaker Chip going over Johnny B. Bad and <laughs> Arachna Man, and Ron Simmons and Tommy Rich going over Steve Armstrong and PN News. Again, I'm perfectly fine with these highlights. Finally, we come to the main event. Though this is the first Battle Bowl, I explained the rules for this similar match in my Great American Bash 89 video. The only difference is that when the final two men meet, winning can only be achieved by elimination over the top ropes. This is your standard clusterfuck match. Entertaining, but very little that can be accomplished. Tommy Rich and Buff Bagwell are the first two entrants to the second ring, and even then they do very little. Jushin Liger gets to perform a few moves on Ricky Morton when they get in, but Liger is eliminated far too quickly for my liking. As a matter of fact, Ricky sends Liger through the middle ropes of the first ring, so technically Liger wasn't eliminated to the second ring. I demand a recount. Lex Luger and Vader are the final two wrestlers in the first ring, but Vader is ultimately sent to the second ring. Things pick up as it comes down to the final four in the second ring, them being Steve Austin and Rick Rude, both part of the Dangerous Alliance, Ricky Steamboat, and Sting. The crowd cheers as Rick accidentally eliminates Steve, then Ricky eliminates Rick while skinning the cat, only for Rude to pull Steamboat with him. Rude gets into the ring and gives Steve a hangman's neckbreaker he calls the Rude Awakening as the crowd explodes into anger. This allows Lex to pick up the pieces, but he makes a classic heelish mistake. Instead of eliminating the weakened Sting right away, he decides against it, saying he's going to punish Sting. This gives Sting a chance to bounce back, which he ultimately does. It's standard storytelling, and while the crowd is hot for the match and its outcome, I find it to be pretty average at best. I realize by this time both men are tired, but give me a little more than punch, kick, stinger, splash. Also, check out the way Luger takes Sting's punches. One of the goofiest faces I've ever seen. I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. On a side note, when Sting and Luger are fighting near the entrance ramp, to the right you can see a family and they brought their infant along, which I find amusing and disturbing at the same time. I mean, couldn't you find a babysitter? I'd understand if the kid was 5 or older, but this one couldn't be more than a year old. Then again, this is Virginia. Overall, Starcade 91 suffers from the same problems I've endured from the past couple Starcades. It just doesn't feel like the biggest show of the year. Instead of presenting us with top shelf matches with engaging stories and phenomenal wrestlers, WCW gives us the Battle Bowl. Not one title defended at this annual event. Just really disappointing, especially since at the time there was a lot of talent in the promotion. I'm giving this a charitable 6 out of 10. Thank you for listening. Please tune in again when I review another wrestling DVD in my collection or anything else that crosses my path.